forecast, showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that ran. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. Our first day on the Clearwater River in Idaho has been a learning experience. Although we tagged a fish early on, action slowed as we tried different techniques in new areas. We needed local guidance. Adam's gonna go side drift the rest of the day. He's gonna stay there that spot until we show up and let us have it. To the bridge. Fish up to the bridge. Hold on a sec. Where's the GoPro at? We can make it through this right here. Yeah, this, this is the problem. You're not gonna make it through that. Oh, I didn't see that telling. You gotta always push the limits, I guess. <laughs> I expect nothing less. I expect nothing less. It's Ricky Bobby. I've never seen anybody make it through there when the water's this low. You probably won't ever again either. The last boat that went through there, they had to open up the dam to lift them up, get them off the water. <laughs> They got one on up, up above us. I got one right here? Yeah. Did I miss it? I wasn't even paying attention. The bottom just gone. Look how shallow I am, too. Uh, yep. yeah. There he is. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just started a reel and it went down. That's that's what we call a bailout fish. No, this is, we totally knew what we were doing. <laughs> we totally knew what we were doing. This is exactly what we tried so, to do. Adam, the local guide here, he got sick and tired of catching fish and gave us a call, let us know that he was going to be moving trying a different technique. Ryan just missed a bobber down and on his second drift back there behind the boat while we were getting plugs out, he hooked up. Dropped a bobber and jig with a little, tipped it a little piece of prawn. It's kind of like I showed earlier. And just let it flow right behind the boat as these guys are dropping plugs out and here we are. It's right here behind the boat. piece of prawn on there. You can see a little bit left. It actually spit up a little chunk right there too. So I guess I'm done for the day there. That's all right. That's what they put these fish in this river for. That's kind of cool. That might even be a little, well, it's hard to say. It's not a hole. Sometimes they hole punch them if they recycle them, if they've been to the hatchery before. That was my second keeper. Tagged out here. Just got to put it on the tag now. So we'll do the same thing we did earlier. Set it over here. Notch it out like they do in Idaho here. And then uh, right the day. And the location code. One, location zero, three. Well, here we go. Using the same rig that Ryan just cut his on. You know, I mean, we're both, we're all fishermen here. We kind of understand that if one thing works two times in a row, you keep oh. doing it, right? Plus, I couldn't Except, do it anymore. No, he couldn't do it anymore, exactly. Legally. <laughs> you know, this one's chrome. Oh, really? This one's actually chrome. Come on, you know, it's shiny. Chrome. Is that a hand? <laughs> what are you talking about tiny? Hey, that's beautiful. I don't know how wash it up. That's a good cool. All right, nice fish. Good Work. job, buddy. Yay! <laughs> See what I got to put up with. Now, seriously, there's something. They're clipping those fish like that, guys. Yep, that's, that's the same that notches on the one I just got. Yep, the same one notch on your first that, one. Get a little notch cut out here. Not sure if that means it's a recycle or not, but 
We've seen that on the other two. Marks here on the fins. Looks like it's been through the gill nets. Must be above the dams. This one is the brightest fish we've seen today so far. Yes, you bring the head, there you go, yep. Up a little higher. Smile, Brandon. <laughs> <He's tired. laughs> I don't understand. What the hell is that can't beat him, join him. So Ryan just had two bites and got his second keeper of the day on this jig. And then Brandon took over on that rod, got his fish, which ended up being our biggest one so far, which could play a big role considering that we're fishing in a derby here. Now I guess it's my turn. The rod's been passed around enough. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you real quick how these guys are putting this setup together. Again, it's just a, your typical quarter ounce maxi jig, nice chrome head, pink stripes on it, the double red beads in the middle and a little bit of hair back here, a little bit of feather back in the back here with a little uh, blue tinsel sticking out there. Look, nice little finesse jig. And what we're doing is we are taking the raw prawns that we had from last night that we cured up with that pro cure, prawn cure, and we're just taking a little hunk, about that big, and we're just tipping the jig, very simple. So I'm just taking this little piece, sliding the hook through it, like so. And when it sits in the water, we bring the knot up top to make sure that it's sitting as straight up and down as possible, just like that. That way it lays like that, creates a bigger profile going through the water against the bottom. And that's what's been working. The day was coming to an end. And even though we found success, it took local knowledge to help us along. There is still much to learn about this fishery. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, and Mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. The guys are putting the boat in the water right now, and. We got a lot to figure out today. Yesterday, we had a game plan going in and we completely went away from that. We went right back and fell into our ruts from fishing out there in the valley in the west side. And we fish faster water, the places that we normally see winter steelhead. It might be the cold out here that just drew us back into our old patterns. But today, we need to look for slower water and find these holding fish. They've been here for a long time. They still have another month or two before they spawn. They're resting. So we're gonna try and find those softer spots, slower water, and hopefully get on a few more fish. You know, the warm water is definitely not a bad idea, but uh, I say we started where we were actually getting big consistently yesterday, the spot that Adam showed us. And if there's boats there, then we go back to the warm water. Okay, is but anywhere there's warm air? No. Woo. I will say one thing from what I noticed from yesterday to today, the water's already a degree and a half less yeah. here Holder. at the ramp. That warm water may be the ticket. We're not going to be in any kind of current. They're just going to be saving as much energy as they can. We clearly figured that out yesterday. They're not in the current. Well, the same setup that you were catching them on yesterday, that little maxi jig with the prawn tail, yep. that's going to be a nice little presentation. So let's let's get up there, see how many boats are up in that spot, and make a game plan once we get up river. Okay. All right, let's do it. It is cold out here, but we made it all the way up to the top and there is no one at the spot that we were catching fish last night. So we're gonna start here, give it a shot. Just keep on throwing different techniques and presentations at them. It's cold, so who knows if they're gonna go or not. Yesterday was the afternoon, water warmed up a touch. So we'll see, time will tell. We're gonna back to first, which I love because I love seeing the rod fold over. There you go, there you go. 
I'm gonna reel it in and check it out. I think the hooks might have straightened out a little bit, guys. That fish hit so hard, man. I thought that we <laughs> that the line actually popped, but that fish just jumped right out, spit the hook. Ryan said he saw the hook come flying out. He crushed it. He hit that thing hard. We're in zero current, and that rod just went flat. What do the hooks look like, Brandon? Put a little bit of the uh, krill shrimp uh, pro care on there, and uh, that's what you want. A little bit of that chartreuse butt action. Did lose two yesterday. Of course, I can't talk. I didn't even feel a fish yesterday. I can talk. I landed my two. Yeah. <laughs> on, son. I want a bobber fish because it worked yesterday, and I'm getting impatient. That's why. It's been a whole 20 minutes without a bite, so we're obviously doing it wrong. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just impatient, that's all. Going back to what worked last night for Ryan and then for Brandon, but not for me. This little pink maxi jig here, that, that was the ticket. Tipping it with a little piece of prawn. The bobber stop is even set at the exact same depth that they were getting bit yesterday, so I can reel in my back troll rod while they're continuing to fish. Their setups that Brandon already got bit on this morning. We're going to mix it up a little bit, give him a different presentation, different look here. Oh, God. Yeah, they keep rolling right in front of the mines back there. Oh, Barber down. There he is. Man, he barely even hit that. I can't believe I have one on. Second day out here, and I finally get into my first clear water steelhead on that Bobber rig, just like what happened yesterday. And what I did, we saw a few fish roll in closer to shore. So I made a cast and really tight to the rocks. And the bobber honestly didn't even go under. It just twitched a couple times. And I just reeled down, came tight, and there he was. He's a derby fish. Yeah, it's a mystery prize. Yeah, the mystery weight <laughs> could be. First Idaho Clearwater River steelhead. Maybe only what, about four pounds, maybe five if I'm lucky, but <laughs> don't push it. It's just beautiful. I just love the red color, the stripe down the middle, the green back, big spots on him. He didn't fight very much, but that's completely due to the fact that we are in 32.9 degree water. My hands are freezing just holding them, so these fish are very lethargic. So putting that solar presentation out there obviously paid dividends for me here. My hands are freezing, so I'm gonna hand the bobber rod off to one of you guys. I need to warm my hands up. This is cold. Try to keep your hand warm. And possibly tangle other people's stuff. back on that corner where we saw some rolling earlier this morning and he just came off you can see a light they're biting I still have my bait on there and they're just barely coming up and nipping at it can get my fingers to work ah, there he goes the one tough part about dropping a bobber straight behind the boat like this is that the fish when they come up and bite they come up and grabbing it like that and the line angle is going straight back upstream towards us in the boat. So when I set the hook, it just pulls the hook straight out of their mouth. Usually when you're fishing at an angle perpendicular to the bobber, they come up and grab it. That line angle comes to the side and it drives the hook right in the corner and in the top of their mouth. So we're at a little bit of a disadvantage right now, but I think what had more to do with it was the fact that these fish are just really cold like us and are lethargic. They just barely came up and tapped it. There you go, see where you rolled right there? Seven. Seven. <laughs> Lucky number seven. <laughs> okay. Maybe we're not going to leave this spot quite yet. They're just further back in the water. So cold. They're just right around that really shallow water. They must be laying that shallow water trying to warm up a little bit. I, I completely agree. Because about four or five casts, I hooked two fish, and they were both just way back around the corner in stagnant water, just not even moving. 
bobber's not even going downstream, but hey, they're biting. This one feels like a little bit bigger, but I don't think that's gonna be hard to do considering the last one was about four or five pounds. bigger than the last one. Ryan, you see fish all the time. How big do you think this is? About eight? Eight pound hen, nice hatchery fish. Just like that, I'm tagged out. It's not even 10 o'clock here on our second day, but hey, after the struggle I had yesterday, I'll take it. And just as quickly as I got this fish into the boat, the guys are grabbing bobber rods, the plugs got reeled in, and we're gonna try and get a few more off that corner there, because it was pretty quick on those casts that had a handful of bites, so. You were the only brave enough one to keep your hands out of your pockets for longer than five seconds. Brave or stupid, but hey, it paid off. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. Well, after Cody's got his two fish, uh, we have our plugs out, both Ryan and I, and might as well go with what's working. So I'm tying on a bobber and jig rod as well. Ryan's gonna fish bobber and jig and, and fish this uh, lower tail out here and see what we can do ourselves. So I'm gonna use a little bit different color. I'm gonna go more, more red and uh, black. And then maxi jig, 1 8 ounce. I'll tip that with that uh, prawn and see what we can do. Fish out, here we go. <laughs> this looks great, it's a nice fish here. Got that good uh, you know, contrasting color here with the red and black with my jig. Tip of that prawn. Looking into the water at that fish, that's why these fish are so camouflaged. You can't see it. It matches his uh, matches his terrain that he's living in. They are definitely cold. Yeah, they didn't move very far from that net. So. It's a nice fish, man. Yeah, that works. Another hatchery, you ready? Yep. All right. This is my first cast of that other jig color. It's that red maxi jig with the black. So first drift through there, didn't even get the whole drift all the way all the way to the back. And uh, he bit that, she bit that right away. Still, that was tipped to that prawn. First steelhead for me today. I lost that one earlier on the plug. And uh, I'm gonna give this rod to Ryan next and let him see if he can get bit on this uh, jig color again. We talked the Idaho fishing game and they do recycle out of here. Uh, on the three fish we had yesterday, the gill plates all had a punch on the left side and this fish here on the left and the right side doesn't have a mark at all so this is a non recycled fish which means this one is a fresh one just come out of the out of the Columbia strain up into the snake and then right into here without being to the hatchery already let's take some of this pro cure steelhead combo you know my last fish I just caught we use a new color a dark red and black put it out there first first drift catch one boom that was changed, it's something different. So now, we use the same jig, we're gonna add a different scent to it. I didn't hit the button. Look at that, that's a bigger fish. Yep. Nice. That's a wild fish. That's a nice fish, dude. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice hey, one. Hey, Cody, this looks like this is a native fish. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Our Ooh, first one cool. of the trip. Yeah, this is our first native of the trip. This is a nice fish. Nice buck. Yeah, a little bit bigger All size. Right. Nice fish, man. Here's the nicest fish we've caught so far on our trip. 
Nice, beautiful 13 pound, 14 pound buck here. Nice native fish. You can see the adipose fins fully intact. Dorsal fins nice and clean. Very healthy fish. Beautiful colors to it, that beautiful green. Nice red stripe, rosy red cheeks. Beautiful fish, gorgeous. This is what we're looking for. All right, that's a beautiful fish. Brandon just landed, uh, what, two in a row? Two in a row. Two in a row on a different colored jig. So we put the, what was the other one? Pink and white with a chrome head. Put that one away. And we grabbed the most random, different colored jig we could find in the box. This is a maxi jig. Yep. It's got green beads, green head. We're just gonna throw a different presentation out there, keep switching it up. We've been getting two or three bites on every different colored jig we've thrown out there. The bait seems to be working, so I'm gonna put bait back on there, but. You know, Ryan, you got a good point there. We know there's a lot of fish there, so definitely change up something bright like that. Yep. Definitely gonna make these fish move it, right. move away or towards it. Yep. So, so it's gonna make something happen. Same yeah. first cast. He's gonna get one here. As soon as he goes back about another 15, 20 feet, hits that corner where the current starts to sweep around to the right, he's gonna get bit right there. The jig. the jig keeps the bait down, usually when you're current, you know, but at this yeah. point, like, what's the point? Well, there he is, Ryan. Hey, look at that. Good job, <laughs> first well, we, it's, we knew it would work, though. Yeah, it's just didn't. something different. You just had to get it back in there. Oh, okay. That's the first time I heard the drag move. That might be, a, that might be Later in the day, it's the water exciting. warming up. Well, I mean, shoot, when we were kids fishing together, we'd fish on the Sandy River up near Marmot. Same fish holding just like these fish are. And we're casting spinners, fishing eggs, and what do we constantly do? We would change colors. I mean, what are we, doing with we knew fish were there. Yep. We just had to get him to bite. Other hand, oh, looks like. Uh, yep. Hatch your hand. Look at that green head in its mouth. <laughs> it's shining. Steve's brother's downstream. Hey, buddy. Derby fish. Oh. Derby. All right. Hey, it took me a while today. Hey. You know, I, I was being nice to you guys. Because <laughs> no. yesterday I cleaned no, 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 up no. so fast. Kind of pattern figured out here. Like we said, right before I cast that out, we switched up the colors. We found the fish, we found the depth. Got the colors switching up. We're getting bit on two or three bites on every color we put out there. And uh, Brandon just hooked another one too while we landed this one. So I'm gonna go put her in the box and put another bait on and get back after it. You know, we made several drifts and there were no bites. So I went six inches deeper on that uh, this fish right here and sure as heck it bit it, so. Making little changes like that can, can make a big difference. You know, we've, we've completely dialed in our pattern at this point. We got the location set. Oh, it came off right there. Fish, fish, fish. There he is. Fish yep. On. yep. Nice job, oh, Ryan. It was oh, chewing bite. on it forever. Oh, I wish. <laughs> Long oh, uh, we're having too much fun, boys. <laughs> it's in the exact same spot every time. <laughs> Number two for the old green machine jig head here. Chewing yeah. on it. It was like, is that a bite? We all saw it jiggle, and I thought I saw it swim off to the side, and then it went under. You know what? We, we have our pattern dialed in to perfection. But it took us a struggle of a day yesterday. We came to a river system we've never been to. And we're fishing on fish that we don't fish on. We're fishing in ways We do not fish that, like this back home. No, not at all. These <laughs> we, fish we do not do this. this. But we paid attention. That's it. We took the advice of others. We took the knowledge that we gained from yesterday. Yeah. Executing well. It's 11 o'clock and we've had almost... What, six or eight opportunities? Oh, at least. Well, this is number seven or eight. I mean, we've, we've had at least 10 opportunities. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is awesome. This is just fun. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. buddy. There's number two for me. I guess we're waiting for Brandon now to get another one over there. Tagged out. Two of us are tagged out by 11 o'clock. It's a good day. Brandon just missed a bite. We got one more to go. He'll get it. Yeah, look, look how deep he ate that. We saw that thing bounce the bobber there for a little while. He just choked Green Machine. There it was. Still got a little prawn left on there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Green beads. I've never caught anything with green beads before. Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, there he is. I got him. Oh, man. Look at that. Right at 12, 12 o'clock. High noon. We got another fish here. Uh, that was actually the second pass with this new jig color. Moved out a little bit further away from where we've been getting them. You know, I mean, think about it. Water's probably warmed up a half a degree now. I bet these fish start moving a little bit. A little bit deeper, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we were talking earlier, these fish, they're going to be in real shallow water back in that tail out. Early morning. Early morning, trying to get as much sun as they can. Yep. Makes all the sense in the world. Oh, yeah. Nice fish.
<laughs> well done, awesome, buddy. <laughs> hey, we came, we saw, we conquered, tagged out on the clear know. water by noon. Now here's what's awesome. Yesterday, we struggled. We had really no real idea what's going on. Adam definitely helped us out. Yeah. And look what we did today. Yeah, I mean, we definitely took some pointers from Adam, yeah. this, the spot specifically, yeah. and That's he really amazing. explained it to us. And like we've mentioned before, location is number one in developing yeah. your pattern. He helped us out with that, but he was back trolling here. He was. He did not throw a bobber, so. I don't know if he ever did or if he didn't. He didn't do any good, so. Yeah, yeah and even uh, we actually ran across him here this morning. He pointed over here, said that he was already fishing here this morning and hadn't touched anything, and we know he was back trolling. And we started out back trolling, you had that bite. Yep. But then we started fishing bobbers, okay. right away started getting bit. We fine tuned the pattern, switched up colors, sizes, scents, and we're tagged out here in a matter of just a few hours, a few other opportunities. This is perfect. I think that Pro Cure uh, prawn is definitely the key. Yeah, yeah switching key. up the prawn. Scents are key too, though. Yep. You are yep. putting yep. a few of the scents. Uh, what were you using? I said, using uh, shrimp uh, krill. You use a shrimp krill, and then also I use the Anis uh, Plus. Yep. And the steelhead combo. And the steel combo, uh, yep. The gel scent. Yep. Put them on the heads of the jigs. Yep. Yeah, we were keeping the gel scent off of the feathers, off right. the back of the jig. We want to keep that off there because it ruins the motion, yep. especially in this calm water. But when we put it on the head, it still added scent, made that little bit of change, that subtle change like we talked about with the color, also in the scent. We're done. Done. That's Stay it. on the boat. Bring it in. Yeah, that's a nice one too. A memory that will last a lifetime. Fishing with my best friends on new water has been special. It took perseverance help from local anglers, and our combined knowledge of steelhead to find the action we experienced. Winning the Clearwater Snake Steelhead Derby was not our goal. It was to challenge ourselves as anglers and meet new people who shared the same passion. None of us ranked near the top of the final standings, but the trip to Lewis Clark Valley was a success.